Indiana Jones, Indiana Jones. It's a podcast about Indiana Jones. Every movie, one minute at a time. Welcome back to the Indiana Jones Minute. This is the podcast where we get to the heart of Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom one minute and several errant arrows at a time. I'm Pete Mubbert. <laughs> I'm Tom Taylor. I'm Gerald Christopher Unshortsman like Porter. <laughs> <laughs> and today we're joined one more time by the Kansas City Crusher, the man from the Alien Minute, John Engel. Welcome back, John. Woo. Whoa! Well, now that's the best nickname I've ever been given. <laughs> I can honestly say, Kansas City Crusher. Uh, thanks for having me back, and thanks for giving me that uh, that new moniker. I'll now have a T-shirt made. Yeah. <laughs> Introduce yourself that way on every show. Yeah, awesome. <laughs> Hope to see that on T Public. So. Uh, okay, I think I'll do that <laughs> immediately after we're done recording. And we are recording minute 108, which begins with Mola Ram gleefully tossing one of his subordinates off of the cliff. And it ends with Mola and Indy fighting over Indy's man purse and Shorty and Willie hightailing it up the cliffside. <laughs> and, I, you know, this starts with Mola Ram tossing this guy down at Indy. And a, a couple of questions I had about it. A, would it have been smarter just to leave the guard there as an obstacle that Indy would have to get past? Mm. And B... Mm. Why is Mola Ram so gleeful in all of this? Like he yeah. laughs and he smiles. And is yeah. this is this something about the Kali blood or is he just a happy man? <laughs> I think he's a really evil man. I think he takes glee in the. I think that's exactly why he chooses to throw the guy at Indy instead of leave him there. I don't think smart yeah. decisions really occur to him as much as, ooh, this would be really, really <laughs> evil. Yeah, and then I'll and then and it'll be fun for me because I'm evil. You know, so yeah. I think that's what the, that explains all that. Well, I had the note that it's very, very Bond villainish, and I, I, I don't even think I've seen all of uh, of You to a Kill, but I remember the scene where Christopher Walken is just, I, to my mind, for no reason, just machine gunning all of the guys who've been working for him. Like <laughs> yep. he's about to, like I don't know, finally enact his master plan, and all the people who've been putting it together for him, he just starts machine gunning him for some reason. I don't yes, know. Yes, you are remembering that correct, and it's like <laughs> okay, cool. maybe the it's maybe the craziest villain thing in all of Bond. Yeah, it's completely crazy. Did you? Was he a super nice guy before that? And they wanted to make sure you knew that he was the bad guy. Is that what was happening? <laughs> I don't know. He made the, he, he like dropped that guy out of that zeppelin at one point. He's a terrible yeah. guy. Terrible. But it does seem like like the kind of cackling, like you know, yep. I'm, I'm yeah. using whoever's nearby. I'll just kill them in the off chance that it might you know slow down the good guy or something. We might yeah. we might just file it under he no nuts he crazy. Sure. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But evil crazy. Uh, yeah, yeah. But and ever since he he you know <laughs> he tipped over the water tower. Yeah. We, yeah, we've been questioning his decisions. Yeah, yeah. he kind of had the same gleeful uh, giggle after that yeah. too. Yeah, he exactly. Did. He's just kind of, you know, and and I agree, Pete. Wouldn't you just leave the guard there and be like, "Hey, let me sneak by here." Yeah, and yeah. Uh, you know, if 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 this guy kind of <laughs> yeah. tries to come up, <laughs> you see an archaeologist asking around about me. Yeah, Tell yeah. Me he didn't see me. <laughs> he's kind of gone full Quint. He's just kind of he's not necessarily making great decisions in his rage right now. <laughs> right, <laughs> right, right. Did you guys notice that the the guard says Saeed? Saeed? Saeed. Oh. Yeah, Saeed. Like yeah. he says that to Mola Ram, just like Pat Roach did to Indy. Is he just like I've always wanted to approach Mola Ram, you know, and he was just like a subordinate. He never got to meet the boss. And he's like, I just wanted him to know my name. <laughs> <laughs> and he knew that this was his last this was his last yeah. chance. I mean, that's like he's kind of saying to him, like, what what was it? Was it like Master or something like that. That was Sahib. Right. Oh, Sahib. That's what I think he said. Oh, is he Sahib? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's, I think that's. I, what he I, said. I I pronounced it wrong, but yeah, I think that's what he says. Huh? Molaram definitely says, "I said get out." Right. <laughs> yeah, that's what it sounds like. Yeah. It oh, sounds really? exactly. That's yeah. what I hear. When every, that's I watched what I hear it. too. In English. I swear he says, I said, get out. <laughs> I wasn't even going to mention that because I was sure Jerry was. <laughs> I said, get out. I was actually trying to beat Jerry to it. I thought for sure Jerry had that note too, but I wanted to make sure to try oh and say God. it first. <laughs> he does He does say that. He do, It does sound like he says, yeah, I said, get out. Yeah. Yep, it does. Yeah. <laughs> it's really you know, but what, one of the tenets of uh, the Temple of Doom is sacrificing of self for the common good. 
Do you think yeah. <laughs> that this guard is um does he go to uh his death willingly because he does let go of the ladder. Now unfortunately he totally whiffs at hitting Indy on the way down. Well, who he does that? <laughs> he does yeah, kind of let go of it. He doesn't, you know, he doesn't try and stay on and be like, "No way, Mola, you're clearly on the losing end of this stick." You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Well, this actually leads me to some more rewriting I wanted to do. Uh, you know, to build upon what I already rewrote uh, in the last minute. <laughs> you're busy. But l- let's say this guy, instead of just being faceless uh, guard, let's say this guy's Chatterlaw. But oh, not the cha- not the chatter oh. law that's the leader, but the yeah, chatter law yeah. that's the disciple. Yeah, I like that. We have more escalation again. We get a moment, so we get chatter law looks at Molaram. We get a couple of little cross cut close ups, and Molaram basically says, "You're going to do this for me." And and mm. to to go off of what Jerry said, chatter law goes, oh, "Oh, of course, master," or something. You get a moment where he yeah. either either it's a heartbreaking moment where the disciple is betrayed. You could play it that way. Right. Or it's this kind of crazy moment where the disciple sacrifices himself for his master, which yeah. makes it all the more scary, which makes Molaram yeah, all yeah. the more powerful. Kind of, yeah, yeah, exactly. Ups his power. And then you could even have a, another moment between, like, he could not just fall. He could fall and actually hit Indy. He could fall and grab <laughs> Indy. They yeah, could have they a moment. Yeah. More stuff could escalate. There's yeah. just a lack of escalation here. There's just no, other than the literal escalation of them climbing up the ladder, there isn't actually <laughs> any narrative ex- uh, uh, escalation here. So it's like, man, how many missed opportunities it would have been simple. I feel like maybe they didn't give this script to John Melius or any of their usual script <laughs> doctor guys. Yeah. I think that this one might have just like, eh, too busy. John Melius too busy <laughs> making Conan uh, the Barbarian, you know. Right. That would have been that would have been amazing if it was Chatterlaw. That would have been yeah. awesome, and yeah. then it would have sort of illuminated a little bit more into like what it's like to be in the Temple of Doom cult. Yeah. The yep. church, it's yeah. like, you're going to do this for me, right? Yeah, and then he's like, of course, yeah. Master. His power is yeah. over people. Yeah, it would have been incredible. So you almost could think, now that makes me think, like Larry, the sacrif- the sacrificial lamb, mm-hmm. what if he was willing? What what if instead of being a scared, like crazy like tourist or whatever you guys think he might have been, what if he was actually a willing <laughs> participant? How terrifying would it have been had a guy yeah. been gladly yeah. given his heart to Molaram? And then it would have play- we would have could have paid off here a similar thing here where another person sacrifices himself and it's in direct danger to our hero yeah uh, when he does so i just think that would have made so much more sense i mean i don't know if the larry being the sacri a willing participant would have been the best thing but at least having a little payoff here with all this stuff none of this stuff is really a payoff to anything Mm -hmm. there really isn't any like character that's been built into these moments to where they pay off for the characters or the action the plot anything and you know like i said i think the movie's already over at this point i do like to think though that this is the moment the the scene that affected jerry so strongly in raiders where the guy smiles at indy and he punches him off a cliff (laughs) i like to think this is the scene that that drove that like when mullah ram (laughs) smiles down at him I was trying to make that connection too, but I couldn't quite figure it out. Cause like, yeah. You think Indy saw that and thought, oh, that'd be funny. I should do that sometime. <laughs> yeah. Just being on a cliffside yeah. and seeing a smile just triggered that right. absolute rage. But he totally missed the point. Indy's like, I figure on killing 40 or 50 more people in my life. I should just smile at one of them. <laughs> I'm going to work that in. <laughs> so we get, as, as the guys are climbing, we get uh, a nice little Raiders theme. And then Mola Ram yells to the guards across the chasm. He says, uh, my soldiers fire arrows at him. Yeah, now why did they wait for that? Did oh, they need yeah. him to They're... yell that first before they had that idea? Or I don't know, like maybe they were worried that he was going to shoot, like they were going to accidentally hit him? I'm I'm imagining going like, oh yeah, arrows. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what? they're swordsmen. Let's get it straight. They're, yeah. sh- you know, scimitarians. Well, do we know that? I mean, they show up with the bows and arrows, right? When we saw well, them. I, well, so that's my question here. That's my question. Aren't okay. these the same, you know, scimitar wielding thuggy who chased Indy to the bridge and then waited? Like we've seen them in the background the mm-hmm. entire time. They mm-hmm. don't go on the bridge like a couple of them do, like four of them do, or maybe five of them. But then there's a group of the mm-hmm. guys from yeah. like five minutes ago. They chase Indy, kind of like in that Stormtrooper minute. Yeah. They all have scimitars. They're running, and then they stop when they get to the bridge, and Indy crosses the bridge, and they're just waiting 
uh, like a reservoir of evil on the other side. Yeah, but do we know that those are exactly the same guys? Like these could be like a new, you know, call in the archers, you know, like they yeah. could have been not even there yet and they just showed up. These guys all have special arrow satchels, too. I'm just thinking there was no call in the archers moment. These guys are just, all of a sudden, yeah. Molaram leans over his shoulder and says, shoot this guy with arrows. Mm -hmm. I mean, where do these guys even come from? It is weird. It's a little weird. Maybe it's not, I don't know. It's, it's, very, it's very henchman shorthand. It's like, oh, these yes. other guys show okay. up. And yeah. the action figure will have arrows with it. <laughs> I think I, maybe I'm a little bit, like, I'm so invested in the swordsman. You're like, mm -hmm. it's been completely, you know, uh, yeah. yeah, it's been completely, uh, yeah, these guys are swordsmen. Yeah. That's, that's, you know, that's what they do. They carry mm -hmm. swords. I'm actually looking. So in minute 106 where Jerry, you said, watch, mm -hmm. these are swordsmen. None of these guys has that special arrow satchel that the arrow guys have. But they do have bows, don't they? No. They have Are you dead serious? I'm dead serious. I'm well, going back. Well, that's why back. I'm so upset. That's why I'm so upset. These guys are scimitarians. In second 51, you see the scimitar guys, and they have different outfits, and they have different weapons. And oh they, like, God, So they all me. ran backwards and let the other guys come and relieve them. <laughs> right. And then these right. guys will all run backwards and let the next guys come and relieve them. Right. Does yogic teleportation technique apply to objects? Oh. oh, can you can you just mm. like yogically yeah. <laughs> beckon summon an object into your hand? He says air, when when Molaram imbues you with the power and says arrows, bows and arrows, you just have them. There you go. Oh, yeah. I like Got that. it. Mm. Uh, yeah, yeah, I like that. I think this yogic this is this is a big problem solver for a lot of the yeah. continuity errors in this movie. <laughs> Although it might create other continuity errors. Yeah. Oh my god, you're totally right. The guys are probably I, I was commenting on the guy getting right to the edge. They've all got yeah. swords. And they're all standing in the exact same spots as the arrow guys. It's I feel like, like I'm losing my mind. It's weird. This is crazy. I yeah. like was firmly in play. Oh, Jared's being a nut. Why is he making such a big deal about them not having arrows? They clearly have arrows and bows and everything. Oh my gosh! Yeah, the the swordsmen are just they're just uh, supplanted with uh, archers. Yeah, can I make a Star Trek reference that only John will get? <laughs> sure, it's like a Day of the Dove when like swords just start appearing in people's hands with a boing 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 sound. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly it. They were down. I mean, they were probably down with yoga on in Day of the Dove, right? Sure. Yeah, totally. of course they were. They were hippie, the hippy dippy cult, right? <laughs> yeah. I, I look. I got no problem with archers, although they're kind of a one-trick pony here. You know what I mean? They just kind of like they just they they fire one volley and then it's like meh. <laughs> <All right. laughs> so we we so, this volley's sort of problematic too because a it's kind of the exact opposite of the Baranka volley, like where every single arrow hit Baranka, every single arrow misses Indy. And I'm curious about. Yeah. I think there are four possibilities why. So here here are the four reasons I think could be happening. One, these guards all awoke at some point, like they either got burned by Shorty or they all got something painful happened on the way over here and they're all awake from the collie blood and so they're missing Indy on purpose. <laughs> Number two is back to the proxy wars that Shiva is magically protecting Indy from all the arrows. Yeah. Huh? I, li I, like your, I like your God's War. Yeah. Your God's War, it's really good. The Battle of the Gods is good. Okay, so you're number two. I definitely think that's the way to go between those two. <laughs> For well, sure. there are two more. I got two more. Yeah. So, number three is Fever Dream Stormtroopers, and they're just bad oh, sure. shots. Sure. And then number four, they let him go. It's the only explanation for the ease of his escape. <laughs> <laughs> they're using Indy to lure them as a, as a tracking device so they can get to the shaman. Oh. Don't they already know where the shaman is? I don't know if they know where the shaman is. They know where the village is, but do, do we know if the shaman was there at the time, or did he show up later? Is he like a shaman uh, for hire? I always assume that was his village. A shaman for hire? Is that what you said? <laughs> yeah. I'll be your shaman for 100 yeah. bucks. And I'll act really upset if you pay me enough. <laughs> That's the uh, the Bollywood version of Spencer for hire, starring Robert Urich. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, Mola Ram's arm high is wearing off. Oh. Oh, yeah. He's yeah, been through a yeah. lot. That's a bad sign. It is. Yeah, things aren't going his way. As he falls, you can see it says bye. <laughs> <laughs> he makes sounds here that are absolutely not sounds that Mola Ram would make. Yeah. He goes like, yeah, yeah, yeah I'm with yeah. you. My I'm fingers you. hurt. 
Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, as, as Willie and Shorty are stomping on his feet with the magically appearing shoes and sandals. Well, uh, Tommy, I thought of you because when Willie, you know, starts kicking Mola Ram's hands on the bridge, you know, mm-hmm. he, he, he she kind of stomps on his his hands. They they bust into Willie's theme. They do. Yeah. I yeah. Don't know too. That's crazy. And I kind of I kind of thought of you. <laughs> oh, thank you. Because I mean, you know, on the one hand. Really? Willie's theme? Because she's stomping on somebody's fingers? I, I don't know. It seems well, a little out of place. But then also, Shorty's right there, and he's doing the same thing. Have they have they gotten sick of Shorty's theme? <laughs> and they don't want to play it every single time? So they yeah, they're just instead? like, dun, 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 whatever the hell Willie's theme is. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, you have to do like a segue. There you go. Let's let's blend them together. Na, 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 na. <laughs> and I like you had a you had a little bridge of I don't know <laughs> right. in there. That was brilliant. <laughs> uh, well, and this, I gotta say the whole kicking down the Willie Shorty kicking down on Molaram is this is where it's kind of the whole scene's really just broken to me. Mm-hmm. It's kind of the only choice if you're not gonna choose to have Shorty do that jump that we talked about, the leap down to help Indy when uh-huh. his heart's getting pulled out. This is kind of your last thing that you can do, and it's about as dull as you can possibly. <laughs> I mean, what, in right. the, what in the world? What kind of choice is this for a moment? That you got you got a man, and a, you got a little boy and a woman kicking at a guy, and he's just holding on and going, yeah. "Gee, yeah. guys, ow, yeah. stop it! Like, what? Stop it already! I'm just trying to climb up there. Yeah. Why don't you guys climb up, and then I'll climb up after? And then, you know, like what is going on here? There's just nothing happening, and it's I don't know. They're kind of painted into a corner." It's yeah. bad. Yeah. I was yeah. always kind of wondering how their fingers didn't all get smashed when they when the bridge hit the wall. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah. Well, well, Willie has a tiny little thread of twine wrapped around her arm, so that's she probably didn't actually have the grip on the oh yeah on the on the wood slats. Now, as for everybody else, Indy was hanging on by his ankle. I don't know how short he's hanging on. I think he kind of <laughs> wraps his arm around some rope. I think it's mainly that they're just coiled around rope. <laughs> so they're not yeah. really hanging on until they get to, to the point where it's a yeah. ladder. And again, can can somebody explain what exactly happens when Mola Ram falls? He turns into a Jedi Knight. Uh, he does, <laughs> right? He does turn he into exactly a Jedi. Like a Jedi or a I Sith knew or, I'd seen yeah. that before. Thanks, Pete. <laughs> yeah, he kind of he like free falls, but yeah. then he catches Indy on the way down, and and Indy is roped into the bridge, right? Uh, yeah. Like, like Still? Indy's tethered to the bridge. Oh, I don't, I don't know if he is or not. When they connect, there's something weird happening. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Or it looks like Molarom might be. I actually think Molarom's the one yeah. that seems to have yeah. gotten yeah. coiled up on a on a bit of rope. Oh, and Indy's sort of holding on to Molarom. Who's yeah. T- who's tethered? And again, like, why why choose to have them drop further down? I mean, we've been moving up. With get us off of this ladder. Like, if I'm writing this scene, <laughs> yeah. I'm I, I'm literally like okay, Mol, we we had Shorty and they're gonna nudge each other and step off the ladder, right? Why not have that happen earlier? Get off of there. Let Molaram off the ladder. Let Indy off the ladder. Then have another like have your moment be up there. It doesn't have to be. He can still fall off if that's what you're really trying to drive at is to get Molaram yeah. to fall off the cliff. Get up to the top of the cliff, and then you have a multitude of other choices to make. I just that's don't true. understand why they just they they kind of gave up. They're like they're on a ladder. Have them fight. Yeah. He falls off, and he makes it. It's okay. I can see them thinking, "Oh, this is a new twist on some sort of action scene. This is, you know, we're gonna we're gonna make this dynamic and cool. That you know, first the rope was cut, the bridge was cut, and now we're going to be clever and find out a way to make an exciting action scene that only takes place in like this vertical space. And you know, to a point, they do that. I mean, actually, you know, when, when Molaram falls here and he knocks Indy off for a second, there's usually like a kind of a lump in my throat, like, oh my gosh, they're falling! Like, you know, it's kind <laughs> yeah, of exciting. Yeah. They do but that I well. But your point, like, yeah, like, okay, they've done the bridge. The bridge is great. We, we've got a lot of mileage out of the bridge. We can get off the bridge now and finish the movie. <laughs> well, yeah, I've got an idea. How about have them fall? How about actually having them fall? Oh, and duke it out with alligators. Yeah. Now th- then, there's that added danger of the alligators, and maybe Indy feeds them to one. Yeah. You know, something. <laughs> it does seem like most people hit the water. Still alive. Most people seem to survive the yeah. fall, but it's the alligators that get them. So yeah, that could work. Yeah. <laughs> what would happen if everybody just makes it to the top? Like, so Short Round and Willie get to the top, and you're like, okay, now what? And then yeah. say Mola Ram gets to the top, and you're like, would Willie and Shorty still be there? Well, are they waiting? They'd be waiting there for <laughs> Indy, or are be they tailing uh, it out of there? Yeah, are they. 
off to start their single parent family. Yeah. <laughs> or then if Indy gets to the top, like would short round fight Molaram or I, and the, I don't know. Well, I didn't understand why that wasn't Molaram's plan from the outset, why he didn't just climb to the top and wait for Indy. Because that way he doesn't have to mm-hmm. retrieve the stones. He could just, as soon as Indy gets up there, he just grabs him and kicks him off or so, you know, he's, cause he's got guards up there with him. Yeah. Right. Well, is it, isn't that what he's trying to do now? I mean, isn't that what Willie and Shorty, they're kicking him while he's trying to get to the top, right? So maybe that's what he was trying to do. Maybe. Oh, but did he start yeah. off higher than Willie and Shorty? No. Oh, he was below them. Yeah. He was hugging them. If he that was always guy. below them, then yeah, he was yeah. trying to do that now, it seems wait like. Wait a minute, wait a but minute. His fingers that, hurt. He should <laughs> be higher than them. He should be. But then he, f- did he fall? Like, he, he fell did. twice. Yeah, he fell and inexplicably yeah. was able to hang on. Yeah, I remember you said you wondered if he had a hook on his front. Oh yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. But he should be higher. That he should have started higher than yeah. Indian Willie. Yeah, yeah, he should have started higher. So he would have had to fall past Indian Willie. Yeah, or past Shorty and Willie. Shorty and Willie. Yeah, did he fall past Shorty and Willie? He might have. Yeah. So in in minute one oh six, second forty two, he's above Shorty and Willie. Oh, he is. Yeah. Okay. And then he falls and he catches. Oh, okay. We didn't make any jokes about the willy dummy. How do we not do that? <laughs> Too low-hanging fruit? I guess. I guess so. Yeah. I'll chalk it up to that. And I kind of like willy now. Come on. Hey, I, w- I was going to say that, too. I, I've, I've said, said some mildly disparaging things about her in these minutes I've been on. Sure. But I don't... I will always give Kate Capshaw the benefit of the doubt in this. Oh, I totally. do not want people to think that... I don't think people should think that Willie is a bad character... Because of Kate Capshaw. It's a no, badly, right. badly, badly written character. That might be my huge revelation when we're all said and done with this movie, yeah. is that how much I like Kate Capshaw in this movie, despite her character. I adore Kate Capshaw. I wish I wish she would not have married Steven Spielberg, to be honest, yeah. because I feel like she would have had an actual career. I think she kind of yeah. settled. Not settled right. on him. You know, oh, I'm settling with Steven Spielberg. That's not what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm deal. just saying that. I loved, not that these were great movies, but I loved Space Camp. I love mm-hmm. her in it. I loved her in Dreamscape, even though yeah. that was a weird, also a weirdly written character. But she's just like <laughs> beautiful. She's great. She's got mm-hmm. a, a grasp of character. And unfortunately really here, I think she has a grasp of character in this. And it's unfortunate what the character was. I think that it, had she been yeah. given a little bit more to do, she would have done it. I think she would have mm-hmm. knocked it out of the park. Mm-hmm. Totally. But they gave her this terrible, like, oh, won't it be clever and funny if we make her this ditzy... Ugh, it just makes me tired to even start to describe what they <laughs> Described. It's yeah. such a bad... It's a poorly written character, and it's unfortunate. But I still love her on screen. I still yeah. think she's she's great. She lights up I'm the screen. You. I could see why they cast her. Yeah. So, to, I, I'm sorry. Maybe I'm a little hyper-focused here. So, is... Molaram attached to the bridge. <laughs> I think he, it looks like it looks like he grabs a rope. He free falls and he catches a rope, and Indy kind of starts to grapple with him. And there's clearly a rope. Yeah, there's a rope okay. there. I just don't know if that's yeah. What he's a, I think it's on Molaram, I guess. But maybe yes. Indy, maybe so. When Indy started to climb, he obviously got rid of his tether to mm-hmm. the bridge. Okay, all right. Yeah, and then Shorty says, "Come on, let's go." Yeah, good idea, Shorty. <laughs> but, but I, I mean, he looks down at like at the high point of the movie, yeah. Like what's a put? Like Molaram and Indy are are <laughs> grappling over the the man purse, yeah, with the stones in it. Yeah. And Shorty, <laughs> come on, let's go. Yeah, that's, what's, that's what John's saying in the theater. All right, the movie's over. Let's go. <laughs> come on, yeah. let's go. That. He looks down at them fighting over the stones. Like the whole movie is around. Yeah, come on, let's go. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's weird. If Indy survives, he'll tell us what happened. Cool. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, unshortsman like. <laughs> it is. I mean, that, that's the lat. Actually, even if he just went up, yeah, that would be one thing. But he literally, I th- he says, "Come on, let's go." <laughs> I'm bored. <laughs> Find some lunch. <laughs> I'm bored. <laughs> well, I just wanted to point out too that you know, you, I guess we're going backwards a little bit though. When that first volley of arrows comes in around Indy, we get that right after they've all come through. We get that moment where he turns around (laughs) and how classic like Harrison Ford slash Indiana Jones it is for him to turn around and be like, gee, guys, come on. Yeah. (laughs) I love that. Sheesh. (laughs) Man, come on. (laughs) I love that. I think that's just so (laughs) so classic. (laughs) This guy's almost shot me with arrows. What are you guys shooting me with arrows? Come on. (laughs) It's not fair. (laughs) 
But I think that's when he's at his most lovable is when he's got that kind of dopey. Yeah. Kind yeah. Of, oh, geez. Absolutely, I don't think we yeah. see that as much in this movie as we do in some right. of the other ones. You know, one one thing you mentioned about Cape Capshaw and just that that was a big revelation for you, Tommy. I think one for me is just how great, I mean great, Harrison Ford is. Oh, sure. Like, I always knew he was good, but he's yeah. great. And and that's he's pretty much the reason I'm watching the movie still. Yeah, just, <laughs> Harrison Ford is great as Indiana Jones. Yeah, I wonder. I was just going to say, I wonder, you know, we can get back to the Tom Selleck discussion for a second, I guess. <laughs> I, I, I kind of wonder that that little scampish, roguish, like, kid that Harrison Ford brings to Indiana Jones that uh-huh. we like, that he turns around and goes, sheesh, guys. I, yeah. I don't know. I mean, not that Tom Selleck doesn't have a sense of humor, but I'm not sure. I, I, I wonder if he would have read that into this character the way Harrison Ford did. Mm-hmm. Like where, where Magnum P.I., for instance, Thomas Magnum is set out as being kind of like that, right? He's a man child uh, yeah. who is a competent, uh, you know, a competent detective, but he's a man child and he knows that it's written out. I don't know that that's on the surface in the screenplay for Raiders of the Lost Ark. I think that that's something that Harrison Ford brought to it more. Yeah. If, if you get what right. I mean. So I kind of wonder if Tom Selleck might have taken it all a little bit too seriously. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It could also be Spielberg. Spielberg direction might have helped some too. But yeah. It, it, it's always, you know, you always want to have that alternate universe where you see Tom Selleck as Harrison Ford or as uh, Indiana Jones, just so you know. I would love to see that. Uh, yeah, he wouldn't be Harrison Ford, but he would have been possibly, I mean, I, I, he just would have been a little different. But I think he would have done a good job. Would you love to see Danny DeVito as short round? Stop it. It's not funny. <laughs> Thank you, Pete. A short Thank round. Thank you, Pete. Yeah. I feel like Pete is like, that's, <laughs> that's Pete. Pete has got uh, the, the rope on the bridge with that comment. Thanks for Come saving on, us. <laughs> Come on, let's go. <laughs> Don't we kind of get it in Romancing the Stone? We kind of exactly. do. Oh, yeah. That's an excellent point. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> D- Danny it. DeVito is somewhere between Sala and Short Round. Yeah, and, he is. and we'd say, you know, Romancing the Stone is a good movie. That's a cool movie. It's a good movie, but we're sure. not doing a podcast about it. Because <laughs> no. it's not. It wouldn't be the same without Harrison Ford. Of course, it wouldn't That's be the same. I'm just saying, yeah. people yes. people uh, knee jerk reaction. They go, "Oh, Tom Selleck. That would have been stupid. It wouldn't have been stupid. It would have been good. Sure, wouldn't have been the same, but it would have been good." I mean, it would have been good the same way like Baskin Robbins is good. <laughs> it's like, sure, you want ice cream? There's a Baskin Robbins. It's fine. It's not. It's not. It's not. You know. And then afterwards, you're like, yeah, I guess we needed ice cream. We'll never know, Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> I just. I kind of wonder if Tom. Sell, you know, if Tom Selleck takes a more serious approach to Raiders of the Lost Ark, maybe it would have been pretty good. Still. Yeah. Had he done that with this movie, though, this movie would have probably been really hard to swallow. I think it would have come off way too dark. Yeah, <laughs> I think yeah, a lot of what true. makes this movie go down at all with some of the crazy like gore and, and darkness in it is that Harrison Ford's playing that character that he plays yeah. the way he does. So I think he Harrison Ford kind of makes like guides this movie even more so than he did Raiders. Uh, mm-hmm. I think Ra- Raiders is much more of a Steven Spielberg product, where this, I think... While we were, were speculating that Lucas and Spielberg were maybe asleep at the wheel a little bit, I think Harrison Ford was on point, despite yeah. his back injury and everything. I think he understood exactly what kind of movie he was in and was able to play the tonal changes correctly. Where if you had somebody trying to play it straight through on straight through this movie in one way, while the movie is tonally shifting back and forth, we might have had a real disaster. Yeah. Well, there's, there's more of a burden on him to carry the movie. Mm-hmm. The, the Temple yeah. of Doom versus yeah, there's just yeah. Uh, that that's yeah. I agree 100. percent Yeah, he, he's got more work to do because the movie is is uh, a little lightweight. Not to mention, it's also the characters in the title. You know, this is a we're <laughs> right. we're now not we're now not yeah. releasing Raiders of the Lost Ark. We're really there's you know the marketing for Raiders of the Lost Ark is. We got this cool character. We got this big action adventure movie. It might remind you of some movies you've seen before and some serials you saw before and this and that. In this movie, it's Indiana Jones is back and he is the hero. Yeah. So yeah. that's a that's a bigger burden to bear. If you're the performer, you got to come in. Of course, we got Harris at this point in Harrison Ford's career, he's now taken that mantle on a few times and he's mm-hmm. the biggest box office draw in the world. So he's you know, some of the pressure's off because he's got to be confidence had to be through the roof for him at mm-hmm. this point. But yeah. you're right, he still he had to he had to come through and I think he understood that and Harrison Ford's a good enough actor to know what to what to do in the situation. So I think he saves the movie in a lot of ways. I agree. Mm-hmm. Oh, wait, I'm getting something coming over the wire here. Oh, you are. 
Yeah, getting the lights Amazing. lighten up. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> this just in from Professor Christy Porter. It's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're that part of the movie. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah, what you said. So. Yeah. yeah, that's where we are. All right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Well, my last note is for Tom. Oh. And I, 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 it works just as well for John. This fight with Mullah Ram and Indy here at the end feels very Star Trek to me. Like it, it's even got kind of the bongo drums playing in the background. It <laughs> feels very. <laughs> oh yeah, no doubt the 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 fight, the hero theme. I I forget what it's actually called, but the once he he comes out of the you know tunnel and becomes the hero, and we get that tracking that dolly shot in, uh-huh. and the da 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 all that stuff really reminds me of like original series Star Trek music, yeah, uh-huh. like fight fight music for sure. Yeah, I see yeah. that. And you right. know, you, it's hard not to think when anybody's hanging from a cliff or you know the villain and the hero, <laughs> not to think of you know Star Trek three and I have had enough of you, come <laughs> right, 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 Kirk. Yeah. You know, so yeah, I agree a hundred percent. Well done, Pete. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, another thing that's well done is, uh, John, you have an excellent podcast discussing the Alien movies. You want to tell us a little more about those? Yeah, we're doing uh, right now we're doing Aliens, the sequel to Alien, which we already completed last year. Um, So you can come over and listen to any episode, uh, all the episodes going back to Alien Minute One at AlienMinute.com. You can also find us at iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, any podcatcher that you use. And we're also um, on Instagram at Alien Minute Podcast and on Twitter at Alien Minute Pod. Yeah, definitely check that out. And Tom, we're also kind of doing maybe what could be called a monster movie. <laughs> That's true. That's the debate. Is, is Jaws a monster <laughs> movie? Is it a horror movie? Is it a thriller? Is it an action? We don't know. But we're trying to find <laughs> out on our Patreon show, Anything Goes, uh, which you can get access to if you support the show uh, over at patreon.com slash Indiana Jones Minute. Or if you want to do it the opposite way, you can go to indianajones.com slash Patreon. And uh, yeah, join us there. We're having an awesome time discussing Jaws over a bunch of episodes. And uh, who knows what we'll do after that. Actually, we know what we'll do after that. But we haven't. We have told people. Yeah. We're doing Close Encounters of the Third Guy. Yeah. Join us over there. Help support the show. And we will love you even more than we already do. If that were even possible. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) We'll see. Put it to the test. Yeah. Put it to the test tomorrow when you come back here and see how much we love you for minute 109 (laughs) of the Indiana Jones Minute. Come on, let's go. (laughs) 